Behold the dreadful yet beautiful coral snake. Its bright reds act as a signal warning predators of the deadly, potent neurotoxins of its venom glands. Just one single bite is enough to... Wait a minute here. There is a poem that I learned as a cub scout to help us tell the difference between a deadly coral snake and a harmless milk snake. Red on yellow kills a fellow. Red on black, venom lack. Supposing that the poem I learned in Cub Scouts is legitimate, and no guarantees there, this is not a deadly coral snake. It's a completely harmless milk snake, sometimes called a king snake. Today we're going to look at how warning colors evolve, and we're going to examine the evolution of the milk snake's lie. Evolutionary question number 31, how does mimicry evolve? Most animals are brown or green. They have evolved to match their environment, which helps them hide. Hiding is usually important for both predators and prey animals, so it, it's obvious how this evolves, but people have long noted that toxic and venomous animals are often brightly colored. It's like they're trying to stand out. What's the deal here? How does this evolve? To explore how this could have happened, we can use a thought experiment. Imagine the ancient ancestors of the coral snake. Imagine them before their bright colors evolved. Now, we don't actually know what color they were before evolving bright reds, but let's assume they looked something like this garter snake with a slight red tint. And that red tint had nothing to do with how venomous they were. It's just the color that they had. Bears, and many other animals, like to eat snakes. But, of course, bears don't like to be bitten by venomous snakes. And it turns out that in the wild, bears don't mess with venomous snakes. They can tell the difference. Well, how does that happen? Just like humans, individual bears seem to have innate differences in how frightened they are of specific things. They can learn to be more or less frightened as well, just using their brain because they're smart. But mammals all seem to start with default instincts as children. So these are heritable or genetically influenced phobias. If a bear is born in a region filled with deadly, slightly red-colored coral snakes and delicious, harmless brown snakes, sorry for the laptop in this stock footage here, I'm, just, I'm doing what I can with what I have. If a bear is born in a region with both reddish coral snakes and harmless brown snakes, any bear that happens to be weirded out by red spots happens to have an innate phobia well, it's going to be less likely to try to eat a red-tinted snake. It's not going to mess with them. Therefore, it will survive and reproduce better than those who don't have this strange new phobia, get bitten, and end up being sick for weeks, some of them even dying, possibly. I mean, the, the snakes could hypothetically kill a bear. Their neurotoxins can definitely ruin a bear's week. A precious week of food gathering, which puts that bear at a huge survival disadvantage. The phobia of red-tinted snakes, if that's a heritable phobia, it will be passed on to the offspring, at least some of the offspring of that bear. It's going to spread in the population over evolutionary time, from generation to generation. As this happens, any coral snake born with a mutation that just so happens to make its bright pigments more intense, those snakes are less likely to be confused by bears for brown snakes they're less likely to be accidentally attacked by bears who are trying to stay away from red snakes. Here we see that a feedback loop is generated. The bears are evolving to be better recognizers of red coral snakes, and coral snakes are evolving to be more red. The red tint, which started out as a cue that the bear was picking up on, is now magnified by the snake over evolutionary time, the snake went from passively, or you could say accidentally, transmitting a cue, a cue that bears picked up on, to actively transmitting a signal. The bright red is a signal saying, stay away, I am venomous. This is how signals are thought to evolve from cues. This is an honest signal. It's a win-win. The bear avoids getting bit. The snake avoids being eaten. Honest signaling can be found everywhere in nature. Bacteria signal to each other. Potential mates signal to each other. Predators and potential prey signal to each other. And they often do this honestly. Along with honest signaling, however, 
dishonest signaling can emerge. Remember that delicious, harmless brown snake with the laptop? <laughs> if a random mutation happens to give one of them red spots as well, they might be confused for a venomous snake. If so, they will also survive and reproduce better than their non-red spotted kin. This mimicking trait can spread through the population as generations pass. That mimic can be augmented until it looks almost identical to the real thing. That's the general theory of how warning signals evolve and how mimics evolve. It seems to make sense, but is it true? It turns out that nobody has actually witnessed the evolution of a signal from a cue from start to finish because it's so hard to capture the very beginnings of these systems. In recent years, some really good work has been done out of Oxford. What they do is they use bacteria, which evolve quickly, so you can actually just watch them evolve in the lab. And they were able to disrupt bacterial signaling systems and then measure responses. They would disrupt them in different ways, and they would predict ahead of time, using signaling theory, how the bacteria would respond to these various degrees of disruption. This was a way to test whether or not signaling theory is actually legitimate. Does signaling theory produce real accurate predictions. What they found is that yes, it does. It really is an accurate theory. Bacteria are great because they evolve rapidly, but it's also really hard to watch what they're doing. In order for us to trace the signals they're sending to each other, those signals have to be strong. This means that it's nearly impossible to capture the actual origin of a signal because by default these signals, they start out weak, right? Well, recently a group of scientists found a way to sort of cheat this system. Instead of trying to watch the evolution of signals in animals, which takes forever because animals have long generation times, or instead of trying to watch it happen in bacteria, which is really hard because it's difficult to detect weak signals, they set up evolution experiments inside of a computer. Now, obviously, this isn't as cool as capturing evolution in the wild or in a laboratory experiment. There's always the danger that your simulation is missing something really important, some variable that has a huge effect on what actually happens in real life. But simulations are a great start. And in this case, maybe you could argue that this is the best option we currently have. So what they did is they set up populations of toxic and non-toxic individuals and allowed predators to evolve from among them. The program they used is Avita, which allows you to set up populations of digital organisms, little individual programs represented in this presentation as colored pixels. Each program starts with specific parameters. They're capable of reproduction. And when they reproduce, random heritable changes in their program are also generated. This simulates mutation. The experiment did not test the signal magnification aspect that we talked about earlier. The red tint to the bright red coloration. Instead, they started with toxic prey that, quote, look obviously different from non-toxic prey. And by look, I mean they have a tag in their program, a tag that other programs may or may not be able to recognize. And if the predator programs can recognize the tag, they may or may not treat those tagged prey items differently from other prey items. The way that tagged prey items are treated is one of the variables that's evolving in this simulation. What they found is that predators quickly, over evolutionary time, over multiple generations, evolved to recognize and avoid toxic prey items. This was just descent with modification acted upon by selection. This is similar to how, in our thought experiment, the bears evolved to recognize and fear the red snakes. As predators in the system evolved to avoid the toxic prey items, the tags on non-toxic prey items began evolving to look more and more like the tags on toxic prey items. Mimicry evolved. The scientists witnessed in silico the evolution of a lie. I think that's cool. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think that data that only comes from actual real-life experiments or observations in the wild should count when we're trying to understand how evolution works. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that down in the comments. So long for now. Subscribe and hit that little bell icon if you like this and you want to see more. John Perry, signing out. So long for now. Stay curious.